know, I, I've always followed this thing that Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss, and other people say just follow the love in your heart and the rest will take care of itself. When I got into spirituality, I just, the more I got into the glee and the joy and the happiness, I did get into the fun of extending it in all kinds of ways that, that people could relate to. That's why I use movies. I had so much fun with movies, letting the spirit do commentary on movies, that actually it, it is becoming more common where people have mystical experiences with me in my movie gatherings. More so than meditation or talks or anything else. I just, I, I totally get into the, the joy and the glee of it when I'm showing a really super, super, super deep metaphysical movie. And I'm there just in the glee of it and the spirit's ripping through me. I was in Venezuela, a woman came up to me after I showed Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind. The spirit was just ripping through me like a, it was like a, one of these revival tents or something. In, down there in Venezuela and she came up after the, the movie and with tears pouring down her face. She'd been a 14-year course student but had never had her first mystical experience and she was crying when she came up to me afterwards and she says, oh, now I know. Oh, my practice will be changed forever. You know, when you, when you haven't had them, it takes a lot of, of, of faith and, you know, determination to hang in with the practice. When you, ha when you do have them, your whole practice gets knocked up uh, a notch or two. And then there was another man in, at our monastery. I think it was Solaris. I was showing Solaris and I was so into it there and got so just totally into it and he had a mystical experience. So it's starting to happen more and more that people are having mystical experiences in my movie gatherings. That's delightful for me. You know, that's a beautiful reflection. I'm having that much fun. I'm feeling that much just lifted up and taken beyond time and space in, in the glee of the moment. And the movies, they're like the modern day parables. So imagine if you had a great, great, great parable with great instruction, kind of priming you and priming your mind and priming your mind to really get leaped vaulted into this experience. That's really what it is. Some of you might have seen a movie that was filmed in Hawaii called Fifty First Dates with uh, Drew Barrymore. Uh, what I like about that movie, I had, I had a really mystical experience one morning when I was down in Cali, Colombia, and I was just thinking of that movie and it just went into euphoria because Drew Barrymore has this accident where seemingly where she collides with this tree and she hits her head and she loses her her memory her long-term memory and she she can't think past this certain day every, she thinks it's the same day every, and then it, it's such a great movie where Adam Sandler plays the, the character starts to fall in love with her and he uses a video to reorient her mind over and over, day after day, about the accident and everything that she's pushed out of awareness, he uses it over and over in order to reach her, you know, to, to break past this, this separation problem, this memory problem. And when I was in Columbia, I thought, that's it. That's it. We just have a memory problem. We're just reliving the unholy instant. We're reliving the past every day, like Groundhog Day. And we've forgotten what the present moment is like, you know. Eckhart Tolle is, t is telling us, power of now, everyone's telling us, live in the now, live in the moment. But we've, we're just reliving this time of separation over and over, and it seems to be that people push our buttons and we have struggles, but we're just reliving the past. You know, we haven't learned how to let it go. But I thought of that movie and I thought, wow, that is so cool that he had so much love that he could use this, this video to reorient her mind to bring her fully into like a link with him where she would feel peace and calm and she wouldn't have fear and she could join and link with him. So much so by the end of the movie that, that she couldn't, still didn't know who he was, but she would see his face in her dreams. You know, it was, it was starting to, the spirit was breaking through her consciousness. And uh, 
So what I thought is you may not see me so much for these Chautauquas because I might just be in my house watching these mystical movies that I've done these commentaries on because I get so excited when it happens. And I'll just be, you just see, you'll hear this mute sounds going in there and I'm just going to be higher than a kite in being reminded of everything that I've taught, you know, now getting played back to me, you know, just reminded, reminded of the glory of all this is, and I've let pour through me, let it come back to me. Wouldn't that be a fun way, you know, people talk about meditation, prayer, you know, watch me watch movies all day, and, and wake up to God, you know, I'm going to find the fun route, you know, people are getting bored with the synagogue and the temples, and the meditation's too dull and everything, come on with me, we yeah, are going to be the, the movie watchers, <laughs> the movie watchers guide to, the pathway to heaven, you know, because I, you know, you got to go with where your passion is. You got to go with where your fun is, your pizzazz, your joy. You know, if it, if your spiritual journey seems like so many rituals, and okay, I got to do my spiritual practice now before I get on with my day. Who, who wants to? How are you going to make that your 99% practice if you don't even like it? You know, if you've got <laughs> resistance to it, how are you going to do it 99%? Now, with me, with movies, I could probably <laughs> do it 99% of the day. The <laughs> yeah, I just, because I, it's the spirit, like, using it in some higher way, so. I'm all, I'm always advocating the fun way to God, you know. I have a friend in Asira who's called the Laughing Saint in Australia, and, and her pathway is to laugh. She one time laughed for over a week, yep. continuously. I thought, how could you even laugh for over a week, but but that's her pathway, and 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 I think that that it can be fun. It it you know if if you think you're waking up to all that is, why shouldn't it be fun? Why? I mean, I had to wash away some of the old ego ideas of fun. Of course, I had those too, and we play them out. And and sometimes the things that the ego sponsors as fun aren't fun anymore. After a while, you have fun for a while, and then all of a sudden you reach a boredom with it or a dullness with it. It's not fun anymore. But this stuff is in, this is intoxicating in a good way. It's it takes you up into the ecstasy, but it's it's through your willingness to 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 go with it, you know, to dive into it. So I I actually somebody asked me, they said, Are you how many weeks of the year do you vacation? <laughs> and I said, uh, what do you mean? Like like vacation, like have fun? And I said, they said, yeah. I said, well, that's that's 52 weeks. That's the whole year. Uh, they said, don't you work? And I said, well, you can, it's your own perception. I'm either working all the time or I'm having fun all the time because I do feel my work is fun. You know, I have a good boss, actually, <laughs> a, a good creator. So that's where we're coming, you know, with this. We're coming more into that alignment of have, why can't we have fun with spirituality? You know, I just, I really, think that, that that is a question we really have to look at. If we're not having fun with our spirituality, then, then there's something to question. Maybe we've gone too serious with something. There's some kind of a tweak we need if our spirituality isn't fun. Of course there'll be pockets of resistance, but the fun can overcome the resistance. Mm -hmm.